In this video, we will show how Visible Analyst and Polaris can be used together to create a robust Agile development environment. Visible Analyst is our modeling tool which allows you to create a variety of different types of model artifacts including entity relationship, UML, and business process models. As part of the UML specification, you have the use case diagram which translates quite nicely to user stories in the Agile or Scrum development process. Polaris is our issue tracking and defect management tool which when used together with Visible Analyst allows you to create an end-to-end -end solution for system development. With Visible Analyst you'll be doing your top high-level model design work and then with Polaris you will do your uh, issue tracking and low-level implementation. First thing we want to do is take a look at a use case diagram in Visual Analyst. And here I've created a very simple use case uh, which describes uh, the customer interaction in an online store. We have a customer and there are a number of activities or use cases, uh, send out books, buy books, put books in a shopping cart, and remove books from the shopping cart. So let's take and transfer some of these use cases to Polaris. Go back to our model list and choose create issues or user stories. Now this is not a feature exclusive to Scrum or Agile, it can be used in any development environment if you want to link your use cases with uh, actual issues in your problem tracking or uh, defect management system. So here we have a list of all the use cases that appear on this particular customer use case diagram. And I'm just going to choose a couple of those. Pick up buy books and put books in a shopping cart. When I transfer these uh, use cases to Polaris, I have a few options. One is to include the description, which is a brief description of the use case, or include the scenario, which is the full-blown um, scenario description of the use case. I can also choose to prefix the name of the actor to the use case, in case we have a number of use cases which have similar names. It's a good way to keep them um, separated inside Polaris. First thing we want to do is choose if I want to create a new issue set for these um, activities or user stories that will be transferring over or select an existing issue set. So I'm going to create a new issue set. I'm being prompted to add login to Polaris. And let's take a look at uh, the properties we create for an issue set. So let's give it a name. We'll call this um, example. Brief description. ID prefix is used for the numbers of the issues to differentiate them between different issue sets. So we can just give them any prefix you want. And lastly, what I want to do is choose the type of template I'll be using to create this issue set. And I have a number of options, traditional software development, Scrum product backlog, Sprint backlog, and resource management. Uh, for this demonstration, I'll be using the product backlog Click OK. And now I'm prompted to modify the properties for this particular issue set. And I'm just going to take the defaults. And now I've created um, my starting point of user stories in Polaris. We go back to Visible Analyst and look at uh, the Visible Analyst repository. We'll take a look at this by books entry. Now, the links tab, I see now I have a uh, 
an issue that's been added to this particular use case. So we have a cross-reference between the use cases in Visible Analyst and the user stories that have been defined in Polaris. Take a look at both books and shopping cart. I should see the same thing here. Once again, another um, issue that's been created inside Polaris. And if I want to, I could open up that issue from here and take a look at the details. But let's take a look at the actual uh, issues that we brought over from Visible Analyst into Polaris. In this case, we have two. Uh, one is called Customer Buy Books. The other is Customer Put Books in Shopping Cart. As you recall, when we actually generated those issues, we specified as an option that we wanted the actor associated with the use case to be prefixed on the user story name. That's why we have customer here. So if we open it up, we see a number of fields that we can specify. Uh, we can spe specify a release, uh, an estimated effort. This is not so much important here, but it is important when we're dealing with sprint backlogs. Here are those two drop-down lists I was talking about if we want to specify members and those drop-downs, they would appear here. And then finally we have a business priority. We'll set this one to urgent. And right now it's not done, so we want to specify that it's going to be in progress. Now if I try to specify a state that has not been assigned to me, a promotion state, I'll get a message saying that I'm not authorized to make that promotion. Let's go back to that issue for a second. I want to show you the second page on the description. This is where the details of the actual uh, user story appear. So here is the scenario details that were passed over from Polaris, I'm sorry, from Visible Analyst. And then we have the conditions of acceptance. What has to occur for these, for this particular feature to be complete? And here we have added three simple conditions that must be met before we can specify that this particular task is completed. Now let's take a look at, this is, this is a product backlog, so now let's take a look at a sprint backlog. And in this case we have a number of tasks associated with this particular sprint backlog. And I have um, not only their status, ID, the name of the task, and when it was modified, but I've, in this case I've linked them to an issue in our pro product backlog. So that gives you the ability to keep your product backlog and sprint backlog in sync. And that linking is done by going to this last tab, the referrals tab. And this shows me the name of the task, its ID number, and what issue set it actually belongs to. If I wanted to create a new relationship between an issue and one issue set and another, I just click on this button and choose the issue or change the issue set and then choose an issue. Finally, one of the most important features that you have when dealing with the Scrum methodology is when you're dealing with the sprint backlog, you want to be able to have a report as to where you stand with regards to the completion of the sprint. And that's done with the burn down report. So here's a simple burn down report that we've created. show you how the issues were created and also how they were worked on in a particular at a particular state throughout the life cycle of the product sprint.